To make things even worse, not only was this board marketed to kids, but each board came pre-packaged with a single camel cigarette and a single match. What's up guys, my name is Levi, this is Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding, and today we're doing 50 illegal skateboards. Over the years, skateboard companies have been notorious for ripping graphics off, for making fun of a lot of things, and for receiving a lot of cease and desist letters from bigger companies. Today, we're gonna to go over 50 board graphics that either got cease and desist letters, had to be immediately pulled from the shelves, or got these companies in hot water. We're talking lawsuits, illegal stuff. Over the years, Blind and World Industries are royalty in the cease and desist world. They've had cease and desist letters from big companies. The list goes on, but it starts with Nintendo, Dr. Seuss, the Church of Scientology, Burger King, and even Disney. World Industries released the Randy Colvin Dianetics graphic that pissed off the Church of Scientology. Mark McKee drew up the graphic originally for Jason Lee because Jason Lee was becoming Hollywood and Scientology and Hollywood kind of go hand in hand sometimes. But Jason Lee said, heck no, I'm not doing it. And like any good graphic, they pass it on to the next guy, which happened to be Randy Colvin. They end up getting hit up by Baker and McKenzie law firm who represent the Church of Scientology. Turns out they can't take a good joke, they were not a fan of the graphic. In 1990, Andy Jenkins, the artist, drew a cat in a hat board graphic for Jason Lee. They then put in their own style of poem in the graphic to try to resist getting a cease and desist. He also did the Grinch and Cindy Lou Who graphic for Jason Lee, which eventually got them a cease and desist from Dr. Seuss himself. World Industries did a Mario ripoff for Jeremy Klein, which eventually got them a cease and desist letter. World Industries has also ripped off Looney Tunes for countless times over the years. Plan B got a cease and desist for a Jungle Book graphic they did for Sean Sheffy. Plan B did a Mike Carroll Nirvana graphic where the graphic was a direct ripoff of the Nevermind album cover by Nirvana. Jim Phillips drew a graphic for Santa Cruz, an Alice in Wonderland style graphic. It was a Jeff Grosso board. A lot of people think that they got a cease and desist, but they never actually did. They did, however, get in hot water when they did a Jeff Grosso Coca-Cola graphic. World Industries did a Steve Rocco 3 board where they had an evil Winnie the Pooh graphic on there and they got them in hot water with Disney. Plan B, Danny Way, Danny the Menace graphic. World Industries did a Day One Song Land Before Time graphic. There was a blind Henry Sanchez graphic that was a Terminator ripoff where it was Arnold Schwarzenegger's face and when you grinded or board slid the board, the graphic came off and it was a Terminator robot face underneath. Girl Skateboards did an NHL Stanley Cup series, which got them in hot water with the National Hockey League. DGK did an entire series. They actually called it the Cease and Desist series, where they pulled a bunch of massive corporation graphics and made them their own. Graphics like MasterCard, Disney, McDonald's, even NASA. It's kind of gnarly because those are some of the most massive companies with the most well-equipped lawyers when it comes to copyright laws. Adam McNatt was watching a lot of Charles Manson documentaries when he came up with his Charles Manson Brown graphic for one-on-one -on -one skateboards. Jim Thibault did a Joker graphic for one of his early SMA pro models. The art was by Justin Forbes and they ended up getting a cease and desist letter from DC Comics. Consolidated did a Giving Tree ripoff graphic. Frank Gerwer did an anti-hero nose face graphic, which got a cease and desist from North Face. Supreme did a series of shop boards where they did a Supreme Louis Vuitton ripoff graphic on the bottom of the boards, and they got threats of legal action from Louis Vuitton, which is kind of ironic because years later, Supreme and Louis Vuitton did collaborations together. These are still some of the most coveted and rare Supreme boards of all time. Black Label did a Randy Colvin zigzags ripoff. Blind Skateboards did their North Park series, which was a South Park ripoff. Girl Skateboards did their Javante Turner, Tommy Hilfiger ripoff graphic, which got them cease and desist. F.A. did a Gino New York Islanders ripoff graphic because he's from Long Island. This is a rare board to find because it was pulled off the shelves immediately. 101 did a Clyde and Hobbs graphic for Clyde Singleton, and it was drawn by Sean Cliver. Flip Skateboards did a Cheech and Chong up in smoke graphic for Tom Penny. The artist was Bernie Tostenson, when they put out the boards, they didn't let Cheech and Chong know. Eventually, Cheech and Chong found those boards, saw them, but instead of 
canceling the whole thing. They were such a fan of skateboarding that they canceled those boards, re-released new graphics with a licensing deal where they paid Cheech and Chong royalties. Jason Dill had a 101 graphic that was ripping off Winnie the Pooh that was very famous. After a large portion of the Plan B team left to start girl skateboards, Rocco, who owned World Industries, was pissed off enough that he started a parody brand called Bish Skateboards that was a satire of the girl skateboard graphics. On this brand, they had pro model boards for all the girl team riders without their knowledge. And every character is drawn as a dick. In the graphics, Rick Howard is being controlled by his girlfriend, Meg. Mike Carroll is being a huge baby. Eric Costin is just a puppet. And Tim Gavin is just a tiny little peener. Apparently this brand is still around somewhere in Japan. Plan B Skateboards did a full Star Wars series where they got cease and desists. Blind Skateboards did a Henry Sanchez Beauty and the Beast ripoff and they were drawn by Mark McKee. This got them an angry letter and a cease and desist from Disney. Baker did a Dukes of Hazard ripoff. The whole idea was thought up by their team riders, Don Nguyen. In the graphic, it was him and his friend, Daniel Shimizu. They were riding in a Dukes of Hazard car and above it was a racial slur for an Asian person on there. This put them on blast with TMZ for being super racist. The Nuge said that he actually had to go and apologize to Andrew Reynolds for the whole thing after and all the controversy. There's a company called Boom Art that put out a series called the Disneyland Memorial Orgy Boards. The original artwork was drawn in black and white by a man named Paul Krasner. It was printed in a satirical magazine and then from there it got quite popular. Years later, it was colored in by a disgruntled ex-Disney employee. That graphic was then taken and put on boards by Boom Art. These boards, if you can find them, sell for a ton of money because obviously Disney is crazy with their copyright laws. Blind Jason Lee Burger King deck. This graphic originally got a cease and desist from Burger King and it was originally supposed to be a Mike Vallely graphic. But after Mike V left, they made it a Jason Lee graphic. The ad for it was a picture of Jason Lee with a shaved head eating a Whopper, which Mike Vallely felt was a personal dig at him because he had a shaved head and he was a vegan. The Skate Mental Alien vs. Predator board, drawn by artist Donnie Miller, it was one of the most popular skate mental graphics drawn of all time. Brad Staba said in the book Agent Provocateurs that he was actually setting up one of these boards while he was in Europe. While setting up the board, he was watching on TV that MJ just died. So he took a piece of grip tape and scratched off MJ's face off the board before riding it. Todd Francis designed a board for real skateboards it was a Hells Angels ripoff board. When they put it out and sold it to stores, Hells Angels found out about this, went to real skateboards, demanded that they go out, collect all the boards that had been sold and bring them back. So that's what they did because they're a scary type of people, brought them all the way back and then the Hells Angels threw them all in a pile and burned them. They were also under constant threat that they thought that the Hells Angels were gonna show up to their offices and beat the crap out of them. Definitely not the type of people that you want to rip off. Todd Francis, the artist, even had an escape route plan. If the HA showed up to his office, he knew how to get out in a safe way and peace. If you want to find out more about this story, check out our 14 things you didn't know about real skateboards video. When Powell released an ad going after small board brands, Blind and Rocco decided they were going to clap back and go to war, David and Goliath style. They made a series of three boards directly ripping off VCJ's artwork. The Ray Rodriguez Skull and Sword board became the Mark Gonzalez Skull and Banana board. The Tony Hawk Hawk Skull became the Jason Lee Dodo Skull. And the Per Willander Nordic Skull became the Rudy Johnson Jock Helmet. You can learn more about this one in our other video, 14 Things You Didn't Know About Blind Skateboards. The Natus Devil Worship board for 101 Skateboards which was originally supposed to be for Jason Lee, but he said that's way too evil for him. It's ironic because Natus's name on the board, spelled backwards, is actually Satan. As well, once the board went out to market, it got banned from a ton of different places. It was banned from every school in the California school district. In the early 90s, Blind Skateboards let out a Sean Cliver deck that had a friendly cartoon drawing of a cigarette butt. And he's saying, hi there kids, my name's Mr. Butts. To make things worse, these boards came packaged with a camel non-filtered cigarette and a matchstick. 
Needless to say, these boards had parents all over the country in uproar. Holy smokes, that was a lot of debauchery. My name's Levi, this is Shred Shop, and you just watched 50 illegal skateboards. Guys, that was a lot of illegal stuff. Make sure you clear your search history after watching this video. If you guys like this video, there's two resources we wanna point you towards. There's a book called Agent Provocateur by Seb Carriol. He's amazing at documenting offensive skateboard graphics and the stories behind it all. And the second book is Disposable, a history of skateboard art. And it was by Sean Cliver, who, if you didn't notice, was on this list a ton of times. We have a link to the books in our store below, or if you got a local skate shop, go buy them there, please. Guys, let us know below what was the craziest board that you saw in there, and which one wasn't so bad and it should have stayed on the shelves. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys wanna keep this content coming at your eyeballs, like, subscribe, and comment is the best way for us to give you this debauchery that your fried brain needs. Stay tuned for Comment of the Week. Oh, we got a spicy one. Comment of the Week from my frenemy, Taryn Nez. He says, next list, colon, nine try hard channels that'll never make it. Number one on the list, colon, Shred Shop. Here you go, bud. Taryn, you're not my friend anymore. Peace.